Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Biochemistry Concepts. Iron that we take in the diet is of two types. One is heme iron and the second one is non-heme iron. Heme iron mainly comes from animal products. This heme iron is absorbed as such but it is absorbed separately by the intestinal mucosal cells. And this heme in the intestinal mucosal cells is broken down by an enzyme called as heme oxygenase which releases iron. So this iron that is in the form of ferric form binds with epoferritin to form the temporary storage form in the mucosal cells that is ferritin. Coming to non-heme iron, so this non-heme iron comes mainly from the plants. Even though we take large amounts of this non-heme iron than the heme iron. This non-heme iron is not absorbed as efficiently as heme iron. So when you compare 20 to 30 percent of the heme iron is absorbed whereas only 1 to 5 percent of the non-heme iron is absorbed. Iron that is present in foods is mostly in ferric form that is Fe3 plus form and it is bound to proteins or organic acids. So the HCl that is present in the gastric juice, it liberates that ferric form of the iron from the foods and reducing substances like ascorbic acid, cysteine, glutathione, these reducing substances they convert ferric form to ferrous form. That is from Fe3 plus form to Fe2 plus form of the iron. So this ferrous form of iron is more soluble than the ferric form of the iron. So due to this, the ferrous form is readily absorbed than the ferric form. This ferrous form of the iron cannot directly enter into the mucosal cells, but it requires the help of a transporter called as divalent metal ion transporter DMT. So this is named as divalent metal ion transporter because it is not specific for the iron. This DMT also involved in the transport of other divalent cations such as magnesium, zinc, copper, lead. So all these divalent metal ions can be transported by this particular transport. So in brief, we will see what happened in the lumen of the GIT. In the lumen of the GIT, the food which contains iron, the two types, heme iron, non-heme iron, this heme iron directly entered into the mucosal cell, whereas the non-heme iron which contains the Fe3 plus form of the iron is released by the HCl and other organic acids. Once it is released, this is converted into ferrous form by ascorbic acid and cysteine. So this iron now binds with divalent metal ion so that it is transported into the mucosal cells. Now coming to events that takes place in this intestinal mucosal cell. So what happens to the iron that entered from the lumen into the mucosal cells? The ferrous form of the iron that enter the intestinal mucosal cell is converted into ferric form by ferroxidase and within the intestinal mucosal cells this iron may be stored or it may be transported or exported out of the mucosal cells into the plasma. Now the ferric form of the iron combines with epoferritin to form ferritin. So this ferritin is a temporary storage form of iron. So in which condition this iron is stored in the mucosal cells? So iron is stored in the individuals who have adequate plasma iron, the persons who have adequate amount of iron in their body. In those persons, these intestinal mucosal cells, they store the iron in the form of ferritin. So this surplus amount of iron that is stored temporarily in the form of ferritin is mobilized whenever iron is required for the body. 
so the ferritin stores are gradually built up and most are last when the mucosal cells are shed so new cells take their place and the cycle of iron build up starts again so iron is stored temporarily in the form of ferritin in the mucosal cells only when the body has sufficient amount of iron but in situations where iron is required immediately in those conditions this conversion or this formation of ferritin will not takes place so whatever iron that entered into the mucosal cells it is directly transported into the plasma so now we'll see what happens to this iron how it is transported from the mucosal cells into the plasma so the iron that is liberated from the ferritin of the mucosal cells it is in ferric state so this ferric iron is first converted into ferrous form by ferroreductase so iron enters into plasma in ferrous state by a transporter protein called as ferroportin but this transportation takes place only when there is free transferrin in the plasma to which this iron can bind so in the plasma iron in the ferrous state is now oxidized to ferric state by a copper containing protein called as ceruloplasmin and this ceruloplasmin has ferroxidase activity now this ferric iron combines with epotransferrin to form transferrin so epotransferrin is specific iron binding protein each epotransferrin can bind with two ferric ions so in the plasma iron is transported by a protein called as transferrin the plasma transferrin level is 250 mg per deciliter and this can bind with 400 mg of iron per deciliter of the plasma so this is known as total iron binding capacity of plasma in short tibc so we have seen that transferrin is the transporter of the iron but why a specific carrier is required for iron transport the reason is the free iron or unbound iron is toxic so there are two reasons why iron is toxic and why iron requires a carrier or transporter the first one is the free iron it can disrupt the conformation a structure of several biologically active proteins And the second reason is so this iron initiates oxidative damage by forming reactive hydroxyl and peroxyl radicals so in simple so this free iron may form the free radicals so these are the two reasons why iron transport requires a specific carrier so this transferrin delivers iron to the cells which have specific iron receptors so we call these receptors as transferrin receptors and these transferrin receptors are present on most of the body cells but so there are some tissues which have very large number of these receptors for example liver so the number of receptors decreases when a person has sufficient amount of iron in the body the other situation is the number of receptors they increase when the iron in the body is decreased so transferrin binds with receptors to form a complex that is transferrin receptor complex and this complex is taken into the cells by endocytosis so the transferrin fuses with acidic endosomes inside the cells to liberate free iron after delivering the iron to the cells the empty epotransferrin receptor complex it returns to the cell surface the released iron can either be used for various biological activities 
For example, this iron can be used for the synthesis of hemoglobin, myoglobin, catalase and peroxidase and also used in the biological oxidation in the form of cytochromes. So other fate is it is stored. So iron is stored in two forms that is ferritin and hemosiderin. So iron is stored in most cells but is predominantly stored in liver, spleen and bone marrow. Storage is important because it serves to package and isolate the iron atoms from the intracellular environments. So thereby it prevents the toxic action of the free iron. It prevents the toxic effect of the free iron on the cell constituents.